welcome to Massive Bob. Today we're looking at uh, applications of calculus to the physical world, uh, projectile motion in particular. This is uh, problem four in the series, and uh, this is an interesting one. We're kicking the soccer ball off the top of the building, and uh, f coming out from the base of the building is actually an inclined plane at 30 degrees, and we are going to have to sort of try and send somebody up the plane in to catch the ball. Can they do it? Well, interestingly enough, we'll find out. Okay, so let's actually just uh, draw a picture of what's actually happening. I always think I like to draw a picture. Okay, so what are we doing? Well, the first thing is, um, okay, we're up on the building, okay, we're kicking our soccer ball as usual. That's uh, from 0 to 20. Okay, now we're actually kicking at 45 degrees to get the maximum range, so it's going out this way. And coming out from, um, okay, the base of the building is a plane at, uh, say, 30 degrees. This is an exaggeration. And the ball is actually going to be landing somewhere on the inclined plane, and someone's going to have to run up and uh, try and catch it. Okay, so um, this is the situation, okay, and um, uh, I always uh, think the best way to do these is, is you know, what do you know? Well, um, if you just draw in a right angle triangle here, you know, this is y and x. So really it's coming down to trying to find some y's and x's, and we're going to have to try and find this distance here. We can use Pythagoras to get the distance. Okay, we're going to work, at, we're going to probably need the time, obviously, uh, to get the velocity at which the person is going to, going to need to run. So how are we going to do all this? Well, I think the first thing is, actually, let's actually just uh, start by deriving all the equations. Okay, well, let's start uh, deriving the equations. Okay, so, well, this is the y. We know that y double dot is equal to minus 10, and x double dot, we know, is 0. Now what about, uh, okay, y dot? y dot, you know, it's just minus 10t plus a constant. Now what is these constants? Well, we know that also x dot is also the x component of our velocity. Now, let's actually quickly draw up what, what's happening here. So from the top, okay, we have, okay, coming out at 45 degrees. Okay, we have, come down this way, we know that's y dot and x dot, and we know, um, Basically, this is a 45 degrees, so we know that, uh, what do we know? Well, and this is the velocity, which actually is 40 meters a second, okay, okay. So, just by looking at this, we can see that the, uh, the cosine of uh, 45, cosine 45, you can see here is, we will hopefully know is 1 on root 2, uh, okay, is uh, x dot on 40, okay. Um, but I'm going to sort of, I think we'll just jump to x dot is, 40 cos 45. So we'll just jump because we've done quite a few of these problems before. Let's just, just uh, say, okay, we know that x dot is what? 40 cos 45, and we know cos 45 is 1 root 2. Uh, okay. And we will hopefully remember from our third work, we multiply that by root 2, 1 root 2, and we end up getting, okay, uh, what's that? 20 root 2. So uh, the comp x component of the velocity is 20 root 2 meters per second, that's the x dot, and the y dot, okay, is, what's that, uh, 40 sine, okay, so 40 sine 45, and we hopefully remember sine 45 is the same as cos 45, complementary angle relationship, and we know that that would also be 20 root 2 meters per second, okay. So we now now have, or we now have the x dot and the y dot components, so we can just say, okay, the x dot is equal to, what, uh, 20 root 2, and the constant here when t is equal to zero initially, the y component of the velocity is also 20 root 2. Okay, so we're now well on the way. Let's uh, integrate again. Uh, now, these are the important ones. We want the x's and the y, so we know this is minus 5 t squared plus uh, now 20 root 2 uh, t. And what is the constant going to be? Uh, well, we know we're still up on top of the building. Uh, we're going to come down on the next x exercise when well, we actually have a bit of uh, resistance. But, uh, so we know that's plus 20. Okay. All right. And we know here that, okay, uh, our x is actually just, uh, what, 20 uh, root 2t plus another constant, but we know it's uh, the x position here. Uh, is zero. So it's actually at zero. All right. So, um, now we've got these equations, we're now going to have to work out uh, how to get, okay, for instance, the time it takes to get to that particular position on the incline. 
but there's a few other things we need to look at as well. So uh, let's actually have a quick look at how we're going to do this. Well, okay, you see here I've actually just uh, redrawn the diagram, and uh, we now have all these equations which govern the motion. Now, we, um, I usually find the equation of the plane uh, first, and uh, we know it's uh, basically coming out at an angle of 30 degrees, and we know it's going through the origin, so we know it has a, an equation like y equals mx, okay? We know it's y equals mx, okay? And uh, we know m is equal to tan theta, so if you like, what is tan theta? Well, tan of 30, so it's basically tan 30x. Now, what is tan 30? Uh, you might have to remember back to your 60-30 um, uh, exact value triangle. 60-30, okay, root 3, 2, 1, okay. What is tan of 30? Okay, you can see it's, uh, what, 1 on root 3. Okay, so we have, what, uh, x on root 3. Okay, opposite on adjacent, tan of 30. So it's a, basically x on root 3. Now, um, we normally, with our third work, we multiply that by root 3 on root 3. So we'd end up getting that the equation of the line here is y is equal to what? 3 root 3. Uh, no, not 3 root 3, just ordinary root 3 x on 3. Okay, so it would just be ordinary um, root 3 x over 3. So it'll just be x times root 3, which is just root 3x, if you like, or root 3x. Root 3 on root 3 is just 3. Okay, so that is going to be our equation of our plane. Okay, um, okay we're now going to try and work out, uh, basically, how fast uh, this person's got to run up that the incline, uh, 30 degrees, uh, to catch this soccer ball, and whether they can possibly do it. And uh, you can see here we need a time, um, and we obviously need the x's and the y uh, positions, if you like, to um, at that time to work out the distance and hence the speed at which the person needs to run. So it's a bit of work involved here. So uh, what are we going to do? Well, the first thing, um, when I first looked at this, I thought, well, look, hold on. Uh, if we look at, uh, okay, y is equal to uh, root 3x on 3, we know that basically 3y on root 3 is equal to x, or if you like, uh, uh, okay, x is equal to what? Multiply by root 3 and 3. Uh, root 3 and 3 is cancelled, so root 3y. So we know that actually x is equal to root 3y, uh, if you like, or y equals 1 on root 3x, if you like, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we know that, and we know at that particular point um, we've got the intersection, or if you like, the solving of the simultaneous equations of the uh, soccer ball's path and the plane, which is just a, a line, a linear equation. Okay. So let's have a look at how we do this. So if um, x is equal to root 3y, and we also know that x is equal to 20 root 2t, and we know that this is actually equal to what? Root 3y is equal to 20 root 2t. Then we know that the, the t at this position is actually, what's that? Well, it's just root 3y over uh, 20 root 2. And if we multiply that by root 2 over root 2, okay, what do we get? You uh, end up getting what? Root 6 over 40. Why? Because that's a t. Now, what are we going to do with this time? Okay, this is the time. Okay, you can see here, this is the time to get to this position here. Okay, um, it's in terms of y. Uh, so we actually need to find the y's for that to happen. So we need to substitute that time, okay, into, okay, our y value equation, if you like, y coordinate, and we've got the time. So we need to substitute this into that equation and solve for y, which is going to be a bit of work. Okay, so let's actually start doing that. Okay, uh, so I'll just uh, rub this, uh, try and rub some of this out. Okay, now, okay, so what's the first thing to do? Well, um, we're going to need to substitute that time. Uh, Okay, okay, and that's so what's the equation? Well, we know that the y, okay, what is the time uh, at that particular, okay, the time, you might remember, was in fact, what, root uh, 6y on, okay, hold on. Okay, the time, okay, was equal to root 6y on 40, yes, that was... Okay, seconds, and okay, um, now we need to plug that into the uh, y coordinate, so it's y is equal to what? 
minus 5, lots of root 6y on 40 okay, squared, plus uh, 20 root 2 times this value, which is actually okay, multiplied by root 6y on 40. You can see some cancelling can go on here and add on 20. Okay, so we need to bring that y over, reform the quadratic equation. So you can see here we can cancel a few things uh, straight away. Um, let's have a quick look. Uh, let's cancel a few things. Okay, we can see that's 2 here. Uh, we know that what this is root uh, 2 times root 2 times root 3. We know that's 2. We can see the action, so the value will be root 3y. And after we do a bit of... Um, Cancelling, we can do obviously 5, uh, 5, 6 to the 30 over 1600. We can cancel that down and we can do a few things. So um, we end up getting uh, y is equal to minus 3y squared on 160 plus root 3y plus 20. Now we need to bring the y over. Uh, okay, oh, well, I just multiply by 160, I think, first. 160, just to clear the fractions. And we get, what, 160y on the left-hand side. Okay, minus 3y squared. Then we get a positive 160 root 3y. And then 160 times 20. Okay, 3,200. Okay, and then we can more bring it all over one side. Um, and basically, we'll get, what, uh, 3 y squared, okay, plus, uh, if you like, 160, I'll just write it as 1 minus root 3y, that's bringing that y across, uh, minus 3,200, okay, we're putting it all over, equals 0. Now, this is now quadratic in terms of y, and we need to basically uh, solve this, okay, so let's actually just uh, put it into the quadratic, uh, okay, so I'll just put it into the quadratic, um, okay, so we're going to need to let's just leave that bit down here. Okay, so let's try. Okay, so what happens now? Okay, well, we know that y would be equal to minus b, so it's minus, okay, 160, 1 minus root 3, plus or minus, now the square root, and you can see here is going to be uh, this thing squared, so it's going to be 160. Now I'm going to swap it around, what, uh, root 3 minus 1, uh, instead of writing negative, squared. Then it's going to be minus 4 times a times c, so it's going to be about uh, plus, I think, we can work it out, 38,400. Okay, all over 2a and a, you can see here's 2, 3 is a 6. Okay, so we end up getting a y value of, uh, let's have a look, what is it, 57, uh, obviously take the positive case, point say 5, 7, roughly, okay, okay, so this is 5, 7 meters, so y is probably that, now what is x, well, you might remember um, x, where, okay, you can see here, um, well, x is equal to root 3y, so if we know that x is equal to root 3y, from before, we just multiply this by root 3, and we can get the x value, so the x value turns out to be about uh, approximately, so this is approximately two decimal places, what, um, 99.72 meters to two decimal places. So that's the x and the y. Okay, and then we can just work out the distance now. Okay, so the distance is obviously the square root of the both of those squared. So let's actually just work out the distance. Okay, so the distance would be, uh, okay, the square root of, uh, okay, this 57.57 squared plus 99.72 squared. I'm going to use the exact values and we end up getting a distance of about 115 meters. So the distance turns out to be d. Okay, the square root of okay, x squared plus y squared is approximately, say, 115.14 meters. So two decimal places. Okay, 2dp. Now, okay, we now have to try and work out, uh, okay, the time, okay, um, to travel that distance. Now, what is the time? Well, if you look back, here's the time. Time is actually the square root of 6 times y divided by 40. So if we put that y value in, we end up getting a time value. Now the time value turns out to be about, to two decimal places, 3.53 seconds. Okay, so if we put that in and 
to, well, get the distance divided by the time, we work out we are going to need to travel at about 32.66 to two decimal places metres per second. OK, so this is our velocity, right? Our distance over time. So can we do that? Well, it turns out to be 100 and, well, as you can see, OK, the distance is 115.14. Uh, can I do it in three seconds? I don't think so. Uh, what's at the moment? Just under 10 seconds for 100 metres is, uh, I think, the record. So uh, I don't think this person is going to be able to catch this ball. Uh, but it turns out to be about um, roughly 117.57 kilometres per hour. And I uh, uh, don't think that's possible for a person to run that fast. OK, well, we know that's not possible. OK, well, uh, thank you for watching, and uh, we'll continue uh, the series shortly. Bye for now.